if we did use hydrazine, what would happen to this machinery here? See if you can draw what this machinery would look like if we used hydrazine. Uh, if you want to, you can try doing the mechanism, but that might take a while. You might see if you can just draw what it would look like without going through the whole mechanism. If we use hydrazine to break these bonds, what are we going to end up with? So that's really good progress. You figured that out with no trouble. So what's going to happen first is the nitrogen is going to attack over here. So as you figured out, this nitrogen would attack here and ultimately break this bond. And then we don't need another hydrazine to attack. We can just use the other nitrogen in the same hydrazine to attack the bottom carbonyl. Anyway, we end up with this. Uh, of course, after this nitrogen attacks, it'll lose a proton. And after this nitrogen attacks, it'll lose a proton. And you both got that right. So in the picture, they would both look like this. And what would be our other product? We'd end up with this. So now, again, we've broken off the amine that we were trying to form all along. So this is a nice, elegant way to do this. We only need, um, whereas it took two equivalents of water to hydrolyze both of these bonds, it only takes one equivalent of hydrazine, because the hydrazine has two nucleophilic atoms. It might be a good uh, homework exercise to draw the whole mechanism for that, but I think and that's pretty clear. And you just add any, like, you just add the hydrazine and that's it? Um, in the book, they didn't mention any catalysts. Okay. So, um, as far as I know, we don't need a catalyst for that. But for, you still first add the base, right? That's right, because exactly. the base is what made this right. into the, um, the nucleophile that attacked this in the first place. So to just to review the overall thing, first of all, we need to attach the alkyl group to the nitrogen. And in order to do that, we need base that makes the nitrogen into a nucleophile so we can do the SN2. Now, once the alkyl group is attached, our second job is to detach the rest of the imide. And we can do that with acidic hydrolysis, basic hydrolysis, or hydrazine. Those are the common approaches. And this, again, is all called the Gabrielle synthesis of amines. Uh, and what's the name of this functional group that we have here? Imide. Imide. That's right, imide. So we have lots of different names with im and am that we refuted at the beginning. So I think this is the last one, imide. That, uh, not to be confused with amide or imine or amine. All right. Or this is, can't it also be a lactam? Oh, boy. I think a lactam is a cyclic amide. Yeah, so isn't that a cyclic? Oh, the N needs to have an H. It's not cyclic, it's not an amide because it's got a carbonyl on both sides. And amide is when you have a carbonyl on only one side and a regular carbon on the other. There's a special name when you have this here. Why do we need separate names for these? Because this has more resonance, so it's going to react differently. Generally speaking, we need different names for functional groups that have different amounts of resonance. That's the reason why, um, why is this called an the amine? The one on the bottom is called a lactam, though? Yeah. A lactam is just a cyclic amide. A lactam is a cyclic amide. Yes. If it didn't have the carbonyl, then it wouldn't be called a lactam? Then it would be a cyclic amine. That's right. Oh, that just doesn't have a name. Yeah, I don't, I don't know any special name for that. It would just be a cyclic amine. That's right. OK. Uh, All right, now we have to back up a step. We're still not done with the Gabrielle synthesis because we have to talk about how would we get the nitrogen in the imide in the first place. Well, generally what we would start with here is Generally, what they want you to be able to do is to start with this and make this. So we have a little synthesis problem here. 
Um, what do we need to add to this compound to make it look like this? NH3. Good. Good. This is going to be another additional elimination, just like all those other um, nucleophilic attacks on. What, what types of uh, functional groups do we have here? Carboxylic acids. Yeah, carboxylic acids. Um, the nitrogen will attack one of the carboxylic acids and displace the OH. And then the nitrogen will attack the other carboxylic acid and displace the other OH. Maybe to save time, we won't go to the mechanism. But it would be a good exercise to do the whole mechanism. There will just be two additional eliminations, one after the other. First, the nitrogen, just to give you. The brief overview. First, the nitrogen will displace this L group losing a hydrogen in the process, and then the nitrogen will displace this O group, losing another hydrogen in the process. Okay. Um, this reaction normally takes heat. Did they show heat in the book? Oh yeah, they definitely did. Um, so this is a good way to make the, phthal the phthalamide out of phthalic acid. And you're probably not supposed to pronounce both the pH and the TH. Do you remember how your instructor pronounces this? Probably just phthalic acid? Phthalic acid. Phthalic? All right, there I, it is. I know what our professor does. It would definitely be better to pronounce, yeah. Pardon? Our GSI says pronounces both the pH and the TH. Right. But um, yeah, All right. Well, yeah, I guess we definitely don't want to just, just pronounce the pH, but uh, I guess we'll be, uh, I guess probably just with the TH. Okay, so we would, um, so this is phthalic acid, which turns into phthalamide. Okay, so uh, now we've really gone through the aspects of the Gabriel synthesis.